Good morning and a warm welcome to morning prayer from St. Mark's Church for Thursday the 24th of September. It's a solo act again this morning as Norma is off on holiday uh, so uh, do include her in your prayers as she has a well earned rest. Let's be still for a moment as we prepare to come to God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 25 In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope, Lord, is in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading today is taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 1. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven not built by human hands. Meanwhile we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore we are always confident, and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For, you, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, 
so that each of us may receive what is due to us for the things done in the body, whether good or bad. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'm told that when a baby was born to the Aztecs, their uh, welcoming ceremony for the new baby uh, involved a lot of weeping and mourning and crying and telling the, young, the child, you have come to this life which is a veil of tears, of sorrow, of sadness and of suffering. It seems to have been a, based upon a, a fairly British assumption that it's best to get the worst out of the way first. And um, once you've uh, been honest with the child about everything that might go wrong in life, from there on things can only get better. But as much as, as, much as we might smile uh, about that practice, the truth is that sometimes life isn't all that great. There is much to enjoy in this life sunshine and food and friendship and all the good things. But there's also much that is hard. Life that is sunny sometimes goes gray. Bodies get aches and pains and sickness and stress and our lives have bereavement and ultimately death. There's something very dissatisfying about our earthly existence. Most of us go through life homesick for a land we never knew, feeling that there must be more. In this passage, Paul explains why. And it's good news. We're dissatisfied with this life because we were made for something more, something better. We're dissatisfied with a life of a life that contains stresses and sorrows and aches and pains and death and bereavement because we were made for a life of eternity, a life without sorrow and suffering, a life without death. And just as we thirst, and our thirst can be quenched by water, just as we hunger and there is such a thing as food, just as we can feel cold and there is such a thing as warmth, so our hunger, our thirst for something more and better than this life can be answered will be answered. So Paul writes that we groan longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Um, when we are in the body he says it's like we're naked and we long to be clothed, we long to receive what we were made for. While we are in this earthly tent, this temporary accommodation, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. We are in this life like refugees in a refugee camp, longing for our true home. And the wonderful news of the Christian message is that that's a longing that can be answered. It's a hunger that can be satisfied. It's a thirst that can be quenched. There is something better. There is a heavenly dwelling. There is an eternal life. God made us for more and he gave us his spirit as proof that it is coming. And so if we are dissatisfied with our existence now, it's because we were made for more. If we hunger and thirst for more now, it's because that hunger and thirst will one day be quenched and satisfied. I'm hoping to go away on holiday in October. And as I work through ordinary everyday life now, the hope of that holiday helps me keep going. It gives me something to look forward to. But it's also something I need to prepare for. I need to pack my bags. I need to book somewhere to stay. I need to book travel to a place to go. If I don't do any of those things, then the holiday will come and I'll be in a mess. In the same way as Christians, we have an eternity to look forward to, not a, not a brief intermission, but an eternity, a permanent home. And looking forward to that can keep us going now when things are grey and dismal and hard. It's also something we need to get ready for. If we're going to be spending eternity with God, then his opinion of us matters. 
if we're going to be spending eternity in the world that is to come, then how important is it compared to this life now? How important are the things of this life compared to the things of eternity? Our priorities are too often skewed as Christians. We make a big priority of this life, of being comfortable now, safe now, well off now, happy now, accepted now. Our focus is on our safety and our security and our popularity in this world. But this world is temporary. It's a temporary accommodation. You don't pour all your energy and efforts into decorating your tent if you know that your house is just round the corner. Even so, as Christians, we need to lift our eyes from the tent we live in to the mansion that waits for us. We need to stop living sometimes for this life and live for the life to come. Adrian is always uh, giving me management books to read as part of my training. And one of the things they like to talk about is the difference between urgent and important. That things go wrong when we neglect the non-urgent important things that we have to think about because we're preoccupied with the non-important urgent things. You got that? So the things that are urgent but not important can take over our lives so that we never give time to the things that are important but not urgent. Modern life is full of urgent things. Things we have to do, people we have to talk to, stuff to sort out. It's very insistent and immediate and demanding. But ultimately it's not that important. It won't last that long. Earth is temporary accommodation. Heaven is forever. We need to make sure we're not neglecting the important eternal things for the sake of the temporary earthly things. We look forward to our holidays. How much more should we look forward to going home? To going home to that place we were made for? We have yearning and dissatisfaction and sorrow now. But in a sense, those are good signs. They're signs that we were made for more than this. And just as our physical hungers and thirsts can be met, so that spiritual hunger and thirst will be met. This tent of an earthly body that, and an earthly life that dissatisfies and fails is not all there is. One day we will exchange this tent for a mansion. Let's look forward to that and let the prospect of that lift our eyes and encourage us when life is grey. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you made us for more than this. And we thank you for the future, the hope we have to look forward to. We thank you for the mansion we are destined for. And we pray that you would lift our eyes to heaven. Lift our eyes from all the urgent, unimportant things of this life. And help us to find hope in what is to come. We pray that you would reset our priorities, that we would be less concerned about our wealth or our standing, our respectability or security during these few earthly years. But that you would help us to make a priority of our security and standing with you, knowing that we must one day appear before your judgment seat and teach us to live getting ready, preparing for that moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, Lord, around the world, and we pray for it to have a better vision of eternity. We pray, Father, that you would help us to be so heavenly-minded 
that we are of great earthly use. To be so secure in our heavenly home that we are not trapped by earthly fears and worries and insecurities and busyness. That being certain of our heavenly destiny, we would be free to live differently now. Help us, Lord, to truly feel and believe in the future before us. And so to care nothing for the opinions of the world, to be willing to risk all for your sake and for your name, that in this life we might be a living witness to the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We continue to pray, pray for the United States with all its troubles at the moment. Fires and COVID and racial tension and political division. And Lord, we pray for the healing of the nation. We pray especially for the upcoming election, that it would heal and not exacerbate divisions, that it would be protected from violence, that the result would be clear and respected and not in doubt. And that with the conclusion of the election campaign, people on both sides would be able to live together, respecting one another as human beings respecting their opinions and experiences and showing each other love. Help your church in the US, we pray, to bridge the divisions of wealth and class and politics and race and to reach out with love to all, to be a force for unity. And keep your church, we pray, from being embroiled in politics, that it would be looking not to this earthly world, but to the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the Middle East and Syria, where conflict still rages, even through coronavirus. And we pray, Father, for an end to the strife. We pray for those in positions of power, that they would repent and turn from their ways of violence. The different communities would have their fear of one another assuaged. But they would have the courage to dare to live together in peace. Strengthen the hands of all peacemakers and all who work for the relief of suffering. That the reign of the Prince of Peace would truly come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need amongst us, and we remember especially um, those who have asked for our prayers. Jane, Bev, Shirley, Liz, Margaret, Brian, Jeanette, Said, and in a moment of quiet we bring other names known to us before God. Lord, as your church, we lift these before you and we intercede for them. Comfort them in their groaning, we pray. Be with them as they struggle with the trials of this life. Refresh and renew their hearts. Heal and strengthen their bodies. Comfort and bring hope to their souls. Help us to know how we can bless them us and them together, to walk in hope through this earthly veil, to that future for which we were made, and our eternal home. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Collect for today. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that, always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we come to the prayer for virgin. Lord of our pilgrimage and of each day's battles, we bring before you the day ahead. Keep watch on our parks, we pray, and strengthen our hearts, that rejecting what is evil and seeking after what is good, we may be holy in thought and deed, rejecting all the ways of the world, the flesh and the devil, to walk in the light of Christ, doing good and speaking truth to the honour of your eternal name. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>